everyone, it's my turn this week to read you the next part of our class story um, that you've been listening to so far over the last couple of weeks, starting with day 23. I'm so excited, I hardly know where to begin. I've been photographed, yes, me, photographed. My head is all in a, all of a spin. I never thought that I would be in a photograph, can you believe it? My likeness will be captured on special paper like what a lord and lady's likeness is in the finest of oil paintings. Of course, I won't be on my own in the photograph when it's ready, when it's developed. The master, Mr Kirby Trott, gave instructions that all of his staff, each and every one of us, be brought together and photographed in one big picture. My mate Mary says it's so that he can show off to all the other toffs how grand he is with his grand house and all of us running around doing his bidding, but I don't care what it's for. I never dreamed I'd be in a photograph. And when all us servants came together in all our best work clothes, you would not believe how many of us there is that works here. My eyes nearly popped right out of my head. I've been here a good few weeks now, and I thought I'd seen most of them, but it's like a whole army. There's a nice little picture there of what they're doing. The photographer is a man called Mr Wimpole, and he was dressed all in black with a most shiny silk top hat. His photography equipment, his camera, and that, is of the most beautiful polished wood and fine brass fittings. He had some kind of black velvet cloth at the back of his big square camera on a stand and he disappeared under it before taking the picture. The way I understand it, it all has to do with light. He has some big photographic plate at the back of the camera and when the light goes through the lens it hits the plate at the back and somehow magics the image onto it. It's a miracle is what it is. John Langley, the first footman who can read and write, had been given a great long list of jobs the servants, we servants do and he called them out and Mr Wimpole decided where they was to stand or sit. That's why Langley called out the jobs and not the names because Mr Wimpole had no way of knowing who does what and apparently where we stood or sat was really important. John is very tall, which is how any footman gets his job in the first place and why we call him Long John's. He looks right handsome in his livery and he knows it. He struts like a cock pheasant. The second footman, plain footman, is also called John. So he calls him Jack. I don't know why, but people christened John often end up being called Jack. Same way that people christened Henry often end up being called Harry. And William sometimes becomes Bills. I don't have to make sense, it just is. I like Jack. The name and the second footman. He's right friendly with everyone and a smile to match. Afterwards, Long John's let me have the list as a record of me, f me fellow workers what keeps on wheels of Mr Pritchard's. Well, I suppose Mr Kirby Trot's empire turning. Nanny Brown weren't in the photograph because she were looking after Master William as usual and Master William couldn't be in the photo because Mr Kirby Trot wouldn't be happy having him in a photograph full of servants. That would not be proper. Apparently, there used to be even more servants here at Lytton House. Cook told me that not, own, not all the rooms are used no more, so they don't need cleaning daily. The furniture's covered in big white dust sheets and the curtains drawn. Mary says she went in one once and it was all atmospheric and ghost-like. Maybe anything under a white sheet looks like a ghost to her, except perhaps a bed. I, for one, cannot wait to see the photograph when Mr Wimpole returns with it. Mr Pritchard has promised, promised us that we should all have a look-see. And that's where I'm going to stop today. Moving on to chapter 20, day 26 next. See you all soon. Bye.